All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. We are so excited to have Dr. Concha on with us today. Good morning, Dr. Concha. How are you? Good morning, Ashina. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we get started, I'm going to ask if you are tuning in, go ahead and tag your friends in the chat box that need to be in on this conversation. We kicked off this month's theme, you know, fund development and year end planning has been the two topics we've been talking about this month. Last week, we had Dr. Angela White Jones from UCF that joined us and talked to, um, in the grant grant writing and year end planning things that grant writers should be doing within your organizations. Um, and then today we're going to be talking uh, with Dr. Concha on, as far as year end planning in the areas of capacity building, what your organization should be doing, along with some resources at UCF that's available to you all. So definitely, definitely make sure that you invite your friends in. If you are um, on catching us on replay, give us a hashtag replay in the chat box so that we know that you are tuning in. And before, and if you're here, let us know that you're here. Give us a good morning so that we know that you are here. Before we get started in today's conversation, I just want to take a moment and just thank our sponsors for making this possible. So special thanks to our sponsor for this month, which was Complex 7. Complex 7 is an online BMW parts and apparel store that provides products that combine quality performance with value pricing. Check out today's sponsor at wwwcomplex 7 dot com. Good morning, Shay. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and jump in. So Dr. Konchuk, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and then your journey into the nonprofit arena. How did you land into nonprofit? Well, thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me, first of all. So um, a little bit of history on myself. I um, I'm from Peru, I'm from South America, from Lima, and I um, came to this country when I was 16 years old. And I was able to do uh, my um, undergraduate and graduate uh, education here in the United States. And so after I finished um, my undergraduate degree at um, FIU, I was invited to travel to um, Zambia, Lusaka, in, in the Sub-Saharan Africa, to uh, be an intern in an organization called Care International. Wow. So, um, and that was the very first time that I was kind of exposed to a large nonprofit organization and, and see what the different services that they provide in developing countries, coming from a developing country, I was very, I, I was able to relate and I learned a lot about capacity building and organizational culture and organizational growth. Um, and that was the first time that I was able to learn a little bit about product evaluation. So when I came back to the United States, I decided to, um, to complete my master's in Latin American studies and started to work with the University of Miami uh, on different areas of product evaluation related to nonprofits targeting Hispanics and far workers in the South south part of florida south deep miami Dade county so mm -hmm. that's how i started working with community rules community-based organizations um, and helping them collecting data helping them to uh, document in terms of how what kind of services they provide and how the services will look like in terms of making an impact and change in the lives of the community that they serve so that's how a little bit of my history and how it started with the nonprofit sector and, and as a consultant first and then now as the director for the Center for Public and Nonprofit Management with UCF. Wow, love it. So you've done nonprofit work internationally, which yes. is amazing. That yes. is absolutely amazing. So um so I know like this so this month's theme has been year end planning and mm -hmm. and fund development, two of our favorite topics around this time of the year, you know, how to get the money. And then on the other side, what should we be doing in different parts of our organization when it comes to preparing for um, the end of the year and gearing up for next year? And I know, and I do also want you to touch on that program evaluation piece as well, if you can, sure. um, when it comes to year end planning, what organization can potentially be doing now especially mm -hmm. if they don't have that component built into their programs. Cause sure. oftentimes, you know, we, 
as nonprofits, we want to hear about um, how to get the money, but also mm -hmm. off, run away from how to evaluate and make sure that we're making the impact and, you know, um, successfully um, performing within our organization. So if you could just touch on a little bit, I know I've kind of shared a few different areas, but sure. just um, touch on a, a few um, of those areas. And so as an evaluator, I can tell you that for the end of the year planning, I will, my best advice for nonprofits will be to assess what have we done throughout the year? What have been our successes? What have been our uh, challenges? I will not use the word failures because I think that brings a lot of negativity, but rather, you know, areas where we can improve, right? Um, and sometimes those challenges are opportunities themselves to find different ways on how can we improve the services that we provide. So do just uh, probably go back to your strategic planning, go back to your, um, to your um i guess program development planning and see where you are at this moment at this point in the year and what you can do to make improvements or to expand to better serve your community in terms of the program evaluation sometimes program evaluation it's been seen as a police or uh, something that is uh, very scary for most nonprofit organizations because it will give you some sort of like a grade, right, of being mm -hmm. successful or not successful. But there has to be a way in which we all learn that product evaluation is not a scary topic. It is a topic that will help you improve, that will help you learn from the community, from others, from other partners, from other nonprofit organizations, from your own service delivery staff, from your management level, right? It's a way of uh, continuing quality improvement and assessment on an ongoing basis. So every time you write a grant, every time you apply for a grant, funders will definitely tell you, well, tell me no more about what you have done, right? What kind of data you collect, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of anecdotes do you have? Because if we want to invest in your nonprofit organization, we want to make sure that those stories and those uh, funds that we are giving you are properly making an impact, right? So that's why I strongly recommend that um, doing evaluation and collecting data not to be, it's not a scary process. It's something that it's easy to do, it depends on what kind of things you are focusing on. You can, you know, if you're providing a program or a training, specifically a behavioral training, um, you can always do pre and post. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there are tools and instruments. If you're using a standardized curriculum that you can use those tools for your own implementation, um, always pilot test those tools because we don't know whether those tools can be you know can fit to your audience so sometimes you know you get reverse expectations like the pre may be higher than the post test it has happened to me with more than 20 mm -hmm. years experience as an evaluator <laughs> so it may happen to anyone and it's not and, and you learn from those mistakes right so um I, I will say try to do that talk to other colleagues and other nonprofits in the sector, what kind of tools they're using, how to collect data. But the most important thing is that data is not, um, sometimes, uh, you know, looking at statistics may not be mm -hmm. uh, appealing, right? So there are different ways to make data more appropriate and more uh, graphically appealing. So you can use different graphics, you can use stories, mm -hmm. use community practices. Um, and if you don't want to use quantitative data, like data in the surveys, percentages, numbers, that kind of data, you can always use, you know, um, qualitative data, which is more on the content, uh, more on the anecdotes, uh, mm -hmm. bubble wording. There's so many ways that it could be appealing for the funder as well in terms of, in terms of collecting that information. And do not forget that every a proposal that you apply, every single proposal will ask you how you're going to evaluate your program. So yes. it is a component of grant writing, um, always, always. And you also have to include a logic model that's not necessarily, maybe not always, but it's a good practice to have. So either a logic model, if you are more advanced or more complex, if you have a more complex program, theory of change, but all those um, instruments and data, um, you know, uh, evaluation tools can be very useful for nonprofits in general. Love it. Like mm -hmm. my, the chat box is, 
box is like lighting up with hearts, likes, and all of that just flying across my screen. So I'm guessing you all are definitely enjoying this information. So thank you for sharing that. Hi, Tanisha. Hi, Dolly. Thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in and have questions, please make sure that you drop them in the chat box and I will definitely be sure to ask them. So um, tell me about, so like for a newer nonprofit organization that may be tuning in, um, program evaluation can be overwhelming. And I've seen two sides of it. One, where there's not evaluation happening at all, or it's happening, but it's mm -hmm. not uh, intentional. Like, you know, yeah, you're putting out a sign-in sheet, but not really, that's it, it's, it's just out there. And right. then I've seen the other side where there is a lot of, it's almost like program evaluation is its own role in itself, meaning mm -hmm. everything is just, you know, it, there's a lot of program evaluation uh, mm -hmm. happening. So what would you say is a good, balance for a nonprofit organization? So there are different ways of evaluating. It's not necessarily on a program level either. Um, you mm -hmm. can always also evaluate your organizational culture, your cultural competence practices, your own, whether you are achieving your mission or not. So program evaluation can be done at the organizational level, at the program mm -hmm. level as well, right? Um, so make sure that you understand the two differences. But mm -hmm. it has to be a balance because it's consuming, you know, collecting data, mm -hmm. analyzing data, reporting back, and as an evaluator, we tend to collect a lot of data, but then we ask ourselves when enough is enough, right? Mm -hmm. Because we can give 50, 60 page reports that from an evaluator perspective could be like the dream come true, right? This is all the things mm -hmm. that we have done. This is an integrated evaluation report, mm -hmm. a comprehensive one. But guess what happens most of the time? You print it and then you put it into your file cabinet and then you forget that it ever existed. So mm -hmm. for me, I will say that the main recommendation will be to summarize those findings, try to um, work on the executive summary more than rather in-depth reports or in-depth evaluations. If you can summarize the successes or the best practices of your organization in one or two pages in an infographic format, or maybe in a, you know, in a, in a different way, maybe in a podcast, in a recording. There's so many ways that you can do even theater. Theater has been uh, utilized for evaluators, um, mm -hmm. all the uh, community theater. And so you replicate those findings and train community members to play a particular role to illustrate the finding. So there are so many mm. ways to do this that is innovative, that is catchy, that it's a community focused, community oriented. Um, I wouldn't uh, go and make your organization a machine of data collection because that's not what's appropriate either, but there has to be mm -hmm. a way in which I will say summarize your data, how to learn how to summarize, but also learn from the findings and what findings you can utilize to make things better. Sometimes we do the evaluation, but we never implemented the findings. And so what's mm -hmm. the purpose of doing an evaluation anyway, right? So make sure that you address that as well. Love it. So at what point will you tell an organization? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking of a few things. One is um, sometimes there are some, I guess, program evaluation methods that will go into play um, because it becomes a requirement now. Yeah. Um, so how do you balance like trying to maintain your grant requirements that have these certain components and then mm -hmm. also your what the evaluation methods your organization currently has and which is that's those organizations that I find actually have a loaded amount of evaluation methods in, in mm -hmm. place is because it just they have their set methods grants come in and now they have these requirements that they want you to start implementing and then they're overwhelmed with um you know yeah. methods for evaluation what would you recommend to those organizations so the program evaluation so when, when you when you write a grant um the program evaluation should be um in alignment with the program that you are proposing right mm -hmm. the most common techniques in or approaches on product evaluation is process and outcome evaluation but are diff there are diff those are the most common types, but there are different approaches within. So let's say that your organization provides culturally responsive interventions. Why not utilize cultural responsive evaluation practices to it? 
So there are different ways that or different approaches within evaluation that can help you kind of like um, generalize the different approaches so you don't have to you know overwhelm your staff so if your nonprofit has a mission of feminist approaches or a feminist point of view there is a feminist oriented approach in product evaluation right if your organization ha highlights in your mission participatory uh, processes or collaboration then there is a participatory empowerment evaluation technique that you can use so um, and you can use the same approach throughout all your programs so it's just a matter of what kind of uh, what's your mission and what will be the best approach of evaluation mm -hmm. that you can utilize across your programs and still you know the types could be the most common process or outcome evaluation which is very straightforward right mm -hmm. but at least you will you will still utilize those approaches that could be aligned to your mission and that will make it more i guess complementary of what you're doing mm -hmm. with evaluation love it so are you familiar with the UN goals? Yes, the sustainable development goals. Yes. Do you mind speaking a little bit about that for um because I know like especially like smaller grassroots mm -hmm. organizations, yes, you might hear it in trainings or you know, but can you talk a little bit about the importance of um aligning with those and what would that look like for an organization? Sure. So there are 17 sustainable development goals and it all uh, they're very comprehensive and um, some of the topics are on gender, equality, income equality, um, um, product evaluation or quality improvement. So there are different aspects or topics. I recently, this is interesting that you're asking me this question because in April of this year, my center um, did the first fully bilingual uh, participatory action and research evaluation conference and we had the director of the evaluation from the United Nations Oscar Garcia as the keynote speaker um, and we focused on the Latin American and Caribbean experiences on participatory evaluation so uh, we were able to um, and I have the videos and the recordings in our YouTube channel that we're going to be releasing very soon so I can share that with your audience as yes. well um, some of the sessions were in Spanish, but other ones were in English, but all of them uh, tackle sustainable development goals. So I guess my recommendation for nonprofit organizations will be to look at the specific um, uh, goals and see which goal aligns more with the mission of your organization. And there are tools, the United Nations website um, has different tools on how to implement those goals at different levels, right? At the community level, nonprofit level, uh, uh, for public sector, for nonprofit sector. So um, that will be the best strategy to do because everything we have done as evaluators, it, it has to be uh, structured in a way that we're making, you know, we're making a change. Evaluators are sometimes, overseen as a as data collectors most of the time right or people that were going to be used as criticizing nonprofit instead of helping them to growth right but um we want to make sure that the the sustainable development goals is something that you guys can use as a way to promote social change because that's what evaluators also do we are advocates for social change and social justice and that's how you can make the link as well um, with sustainable development goals and your nonprofit organization. Love it. Thank you. Yes, if you can share that video, we'd mm -hmm. love to share it in the group. And I also shared in the chat box um, the link to the actual UN.org that shares um, information about sustainable goals. And you said mm -hmm. there's actual tools that connect mm -hmm. for each of the, the, um, the goals. Yes. The goals. Okay, awesome. So I did share the um, link in the web. So we have a question. Let me see. So and Chuck, I may need you to clarify a little bit. So it says, can you use them in program evaluation? And I'm assuming, are you, um, and if, can you let us know, is that in reference to the UN goals? Can you repeat the question? I, the question is, can you use them in program evaluation? Is I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, I'm assuming that's what it is, yes. Oh, yes. Um... You can okay. use them in, as part of your your evaluation um, 
when you write your evaluation proposal, there has to be a framework, right? And so you select different approaches, like the ones that I was telling uh, on cultural responsive evaluation, empowerment evaluation, participatory evaluation, gender-based evaluation. And then you can even add uh, an additional component, which will be this evaluation goes along with goal number one, five, seven, I don't know, of the sustainable development goals because of the following reasons. And you can make your case like that. Love it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. All right. And okay, so I know you're going to share some additional information regarding the nonprofit professional uh, program. If you want to share your screen and we can kind of talk about this program and the resource available to nonprofit leaders. Sure. And let me just um, see if I just go to, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right, so um, we launched this nonprofit professional program certificate, the Center for Public and Nonprofit Management, back in August 15, I believe it went live. We have um, a few students registered, but the idea for this certificate is that um, the certificate is tailored to nonprofit professionals who don't want to go and do a bachelor's degree in nonprofit management or a master's degree. This is through continuing education, so it's non-credit. However, there's, there are a lot of benefits of doing the certificate, and I will tell you a little bit more about this. But um, there are no requirements. So if you are living abroad, you can take the, the you can register the, with the same fee as someone that lives in the U.S. There is no need to have an international visa. There is no educational requirement. You just go to the link that I will provide at the end of this presentation and you can register. So it is 100% offline and it specifically was created to establish a career benchmark that captures the knowledge and understanding of the nonprofit sector. Um, it helps to grow and to apply um, more knowledge on nonprofit management that will be uh, help that will help you to become successful in carry out your mission. And uh, one of the most important benefits is that it will prepare you to pass the certified nonprofit pro professional credential. That credential, which is your CMP, uh, Lashina, that you have next to your name, mm -hmm. it's a credential. It's the only national credential for nonprofit professionals. So sometimes, uh, you know, you go to and do your undergraduate or your master's degree, right, to obtain that certified um, nonprofit professional. But we are now given the opportunity of non, you know, nonprofit professionals to get this certificate without going into an academic program. And this program can be completed if you're working full time. It can be completed in four months. If you are uh, working uh, part time or um, not uh, or less you can even do it in two months right and not textbook required we provide everything so um so like i said before the uh let me just lower this down the um all the assignments for the certificates are um will prepare you to pass the nonprofit leadership alliance certified nonprofit uh, credential exam and um, you will have access to the credential exam after you complete the certificate with us. And uh, like I said before, it's the only recognized national certified um, credential in the United States. So why do we need this? What are some of the benefits of having the CMP? Right? It's because we obviously need people like all of us, and I include myself, that focuses on a nonprofit mission that we would like to make changes in the community that we live because there is a high demand in nonprofit professions. There is always um, that number of people that are working in the nonprofit sector is always increasing. And there has been a preliminary study on the credential that people who complete the credential or pass the credential um, exam are more, seven times more likely to um, rise to a leadership level position. And there are more than 11,000 people already with a CMP credential in the United States. So those are my colleagues, Stephanie, Dr. Crick, and Dr. Siegel. They both helped me redesign um, the content and uh, make it more interactive as well. And something, an interesting fact that I want to highlight is that, did you know that this program offers assistance and guidance by the same professors of the masters in the nonprofit management program? The MNM program ranks currently number nine in the US. 
um, and also for the World Report Graduate um, School. So that's something that I wanted to highlight, even though it's 100% uh, fully online. Uh, one of the benefits is that in this case, I am the moderator of the of the certificate at this point, and um, as a program evaluator um, specialist and, and also nonprofit management um, professor, um, I'll provide any type of assistance and guidance and uh, for any questions that all the students in the certificate will have. So this year is going to be me, myself, but maybe next year will be uh, another faculty member from the M&M program, which ranks number nine in the US, US News hey. report and the World Report Graduate School. So not only you're getting content that is very relevant for improving your nonprofit um, organization, you're not only getting information and prepare you on passing the exam, the credential exam, but also creating, getting the assistance and help from top scholars in the nonprofit sector. So there are eight units in the certificate and you have to have at least 80% to pass um, the final exam for each unit. You have up to three times to take that final exam per unit in order to move to the next unit. So um, there are eight different topics on cultural competence, resource development and fundraising, nonprofit governance and volunteer management, marketing and communication, trends, trends technology and challenges, nonprofit program design and program evaluation, finance, accountability and transparency, as well as foundation of the nonprofit sector. So this is just a schedule and uh, you can start anytime. There is not like a traditional um, academic program in which you start a specific date in the fall, in the spring, and in the summer. That's not the case in a non-credit continuing education program. You start when you register, pretty much that's how it is. And so this is just a tentative schedule as to how to plan your study so you'll be able to finish it. If you're working in a full-time basis, you can you know finish it in 16 weeks or four months. So this is just some um, snapshots of the course. Uh, we have videos, discussions um, for each of the units, assignments. Um, so each unit has four modules and each of those modules have activities and at the end of final exam for each unit. Um, I'm not gonna go over this because I think I already went over the, um, uh, the exams and the uh, activities. You have to have at least 80% to pass it, but for the activities, you can take them all many times, unlimited number of times, but for the exam, the unit exam, you have up to three attempts. Now, I'm being in a situation that a student couldn't pass it after the third attempt. Then you contact me, We'll talk about it, we'll see how I can help, and then reopen the exam so you can take it again. So there are different ways, you know, to, to help our students. And obviously we have the same expectations um, that, we, uh, um, that we have for our graduate and undergraduate courses, the same expectations for our non-credit certificates um, in terms of respect, in terms of respecting the tone and, uh, of, um, and content when uh, doing remote communication with other uh, students. Uh, also, if there is any specific need in terms of disability, you can contact me. We can always uh, make sure that accommodate your specific needs to be able to, you know, make sure that you um, complete the test, the, the entire program successfully. So the cost is 1950 the entire cost for the certificate, um, but we are giving a 10% discount code using CAP10, and you can use the link here. Uh, or scan it, and I know that, um, Lucina, you have the link yep. as well you're going to share, right? I'll share those links, yep. Mm -hmm. And this is my contact information, which I'm, I'm sure that you're going to also share, so I'm just going to stop my... Yeah, I'm going to um, put them in the chat box now, let me see how they show up. Okay, so awesome. If you guys have any questions, take this opportunity to ask any questions that you think. Um, yes. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. I just shared the link to the program along with how you can stay connected with the program along with Dr. Concha. So mm -hmm. definitely check those links out um, as well. And um, so I remember I just like while you were going, I was just having like a reflection. One of when back in 2011 is when I graduated with my master's in nonprofit management. I was one of the first classes to join UCF when the program came. Uh -huh. um 
to UCF. Yeah, so that was absolutely amazing. And then I just to see how the field has grown over the years. I mean, there wasn't as much resources or even groups like these for nonprofit organizations to be able to connect with each other to continue to learn the field, advance the organization. Um, and then just hearing you kind of talk about these resources that's available, and then not only um, you, you don't have to go through a degree program, but you can go through the certificate program, um, and then you still have the opportunity to get your um, become a certified nonprofit professional using the courses that you go through here. And at the same time, just getting all the knowledge that you need to grow your nonprofit or advance yourselves in the nonprofit arena. So this is just absolutely amazing. I'm, I just went back, like while you were going, I was like, oh my gosh, like the program has grown. Um, just the resources as a whole in the community for nonprofits to me has grown um, as well. Um, so, it, you know, all the tools are out there to equip organizations to, um, to grow to the next level, which is awesome. Yes, no, this is, this is definitely uh, something that I know that the center wanted to do for a long time and I was able to uh, make it happen and, and then make sure that it's there because the content was already there. We just needed to review it and put it into Canvas, have a conversation with ContinueNet and just make it happen. So I'm very glad and happy to be able to have launched this certificate um, and now it's accessible for everyone in the United States and also any other English speaking countries. Or if you are have English proficiency um, and you live in someplace else, you are also welcome to to register as well. Love it. This is absolutely awesome. So let me ask this um, just in case someone is wondering, are there scholarship opportunities or anything like that available for leaders um so at this point there are no scholarships um available however we are working with career source right now to see whether that's something that they will support mm. for people who are looking for a job in the nonprofit sector and need additional training that career source if they approve it they may most likely um pay and cover um that tuition on behalf of the nonprofit um and you know um staff or a person that is like to invest their time in the nonprofit sector. Oh, that would be amazing. If that goes through, do you mind just kind of keeping me connected? Because I know several people that I'm sure would be interested. Um, awesome. Yes. Okay, so thank you so much. So all right, so let's go over a recap of some. So before we end any call, I normally like to go over homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot of different pieces that um, I was able to pull out for homework. One is definitely check out the nonprofit pro professional program. Those links are in the chat box. So that's one of our homework assignments, kind of um, taking a look at that. Uh, take a look at your success and challenges using um, an area of program evaluation for your organization this year and see how you all can improve for next year. Um, also, take a look at the um, UN goals. That link is also in the chat box. If you're not if you're not familiar with them, def definitely explore those. And um, last but not least, so next week we're going to be having a um, virtual uh, session for ACES Matter Ad Adverse Childhood Experiences. And I'm going to go ahead and share that link. If you have not registered, this session is going to be taking place. Um, it's going to be taking place on Zoom. So I'm telling everyone that because I know we've had Zoom sessions before and sometimes individuals will come in a group and say, hey, where is everyone? So the party's going to be on Zoom next um, for this. We're still going to have nonprofit enthusiasts live, but on that Wednesday, we'll be going to Zoom and we'll be learning more about our adverse childhood experiences. That's something I always talk about. It's important for us to know our own so that we can better serve our community. Um, so please take advantage of this free um, this free awareness party that will be coming up. Invite your, um, your other nonprofit friends or just anyone that you feel will benefit from this. So the link is in there, please register for that. Um, um, and I'm gonna ask you to register now. You know why? Because if you're anything like me, the second we log out, you're not gonna remember to do it. So please take a moment. It's a really quick registration. Click on the link, register, share it with others so that they can tune in. Uh, we're so happy to um, partner with ACES Matter on bringing this to you all. So please register for that. So that's your homework assignments. You got quite a few between now and next week. <laughs> so please, please, please complete um, those um, assignments. Anything else, Dr. Concha, before we start, we sign off? 
No, I think, um, you know, enjoy this time of the year. It's almost uh, the end and we know that December, it's sort of like a sort of relaxed type of theme. Make sure that you also, you know, get together with your community, celebrate your success, always celebrate, celebrate with your community, celebrate with your Mm -hmm. um, colleagues. Um, for all the accomplishments. I know that working in a nonprofit sector can be overburdened, but at the same time, it's very um, excited and, and, and it gives you a lot of things um, that you can, um, you know, give back to the community. So it's rewarding at the same time. But um, other than that, uh, have a great um, uh, day and I look forward. If you guys have any questions, you know how to contact me. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you so much for um, joining us. And I'm going to see if we can possibly schedule another session on pro- just on program evaluation as a whole, because <laughs> I think that would be absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.